You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you to the Let's Play episode of Don Chorus Miko's Path. So, um, I believe the video you guys will be seeing the day after Thanksgiving will be my, uh, playthrough, uh, will be more of Jesse's content for Changeling Tales. So, you know, happy late Thanksgiving, guys. I hope you enjoy it. So without further ado, let's jump right back into it. We were just in the cafeteria meeting all the lovely boys in the neighborhood. So uh, without further ado, sit back and enjoy. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Start timer. Okay. Yeah, after lunch it disappeared somewhere. Why, did you by any chance find a key lying somewhere? No, unfortunately. Did they give you a spare one? No, they asked me to move to another room for today. It's not that bad, then. Good that they had some spare rooms. No, no. They didn't have any. They asked me to move into someone else's room. Huh. And where are you staying? I don't know yet. Everyone goes silent for a moment. Hey, don't worry about it. I know I have some options, I just didn't decide yet. The mood quickly brightens and the lighthearted conversations continue as everyone goes back to eating. Lake acts shy at first, overwhelmed by the amount of new people, but warms up to them quickly and amuses everyone with stories from the dormitory, like the one about his roommate boiling sausages in an electric kettle. Bjorn manages to snatch some extra pancakes that Jorgen and Coach didn't want, while Rune ends up eating most of the blueberries despite his earlier words. Biko stays silent for most of the dinner, but I make some effort to include him in the conversation too. Travis tells us a bit about Japan. Jorgen talks about a gallery in the nearest city that's apparently a must-see, and Devin tells us a bit about how life in the U.S. looks like. It really does. It's really been great. It's really been great being here with everyone. Uh, Miko, yes. Stay with Miko, Travis, and Bjorn. Oh, that was a good meal. Yeah, we were really lucky with this guest house. It still has nothing on Ryokins, though. You'd be hard. To, you'd be hard time trying to find one here. Miko chuckles softly. He's sitting on the floor, listening to the conversation while me and Bjorn sit on the, sit on one bed and Travis on the other. Oh, guys! By the way, I ordered a 4K monitor, so you guys can expect me to up my uh, quality on these videos to uh, about 1440p. So, 1440p, 60 FPS for those of you who have higher res displays. Enjoy. <laughs> Lake and Jorgen left the cafeteria as soon as they finished eating, as did Rune and Devon. We stayed for a while. We strayed for a while. We stayed for a while, talking, before Miko suggested that we go to his room. Yeah, I know. Let me dream. Nothing beats a Ryukin, though. You should definitely stay, stay in one if you ever visit Japan. Imagine having an onsen in the same building, sleeping in futons, having Japanese food for dinner. That does sound good. Remember that not many Ryukins have an onsen. Also, we have a sauna and a swimming pool here. That's even nicer. I had to sleep in a bed that on the floor in a futon, and the food here is pretty good, too. You should open up to other cultures, too, Travis. Travis seems unconvinced. You're simply saying that because you've never been in one. Okay, you've got me there. I didn't travel much, and when I did, it was mostly in Norway. Really? Why? My parents are the most boring people in the world. They prefer to spend vacations within the country, so besides visiting relatives, we never went anywhere. Oh, that sucks. What about you, Miko? Did you travel much? A bit. My parents aren't very fond of traveling, but we've had a few trips together. We were mostly visiting Scandinavian countries, though. I've been to Iceland and Denmark, and obviously Norway. Oh, and we were in, Por we were in Poland once, visiting Katowice. Apparently, my grandmother was born there. I was little then. I don't remember much, though. Mostly old buildings and industrial chimneys. I wonder how that country looks now. It seemed sort of desolate back then, but a lot can change in 15 years. <clears throat> now you're telling me. Hopefully. I would like to see more of the world. Travel somewhere beyond Europe. You're really lucky to have seen Japan, Travis. Let me save it right here, guys. I guess I am. By the way, Miko, could you play some of your music? 
Pico smiles and moves closer to his gear, switching it on. <coughs> sure, I have a few tracks I was working on. Mostly ambient stuff, though. Oh, maybe you'll like this one. I tried doing some something different than I usually do. I think I'm fairly happy with how it turned out. Miko presses something on his groove box, and the music starts playing. Travis lies down on the bed and closes his eyes, listening. Bjorn does the same, slowly lying back next to me. I close my eyes, too, leaning back against the wall. This is nice. You know, I miss that a lot. More than I thought. Sitting with my friends, listening to music together, just chilling. Yeah, I miss that too. Last time I did that was, I don't know, what, the beginning of high school? It is nice indeed. It reminds me of all the evenings I've spent with Miko at my home. We used to have a tradition I enjoyed a lot. Every few Saturdays, I would invite Miko and a few of our mutual friends for a listening party. We would wait for the sunset to enjoy the music in darkness, lie down on my couch together, and then I would play one of our favorite albums. We usually stayed silent for the whole duration of the album, just enjoying each other's absence. Uh, just absence? <laughs> just enjoying someone's absence, just enjoying each other's presence. As we stopped spending time together, the tradition died out, until now I forgot about it completely. Only now I understand how much I miss the other's company. I guess I was a bit lonely since I moved out of Finland, but I filled my days with work and didn't even notice it. Carvin, do you remember our school trip to Turku in middle school? Yeah, we did the same thing then, if I remember correctly. Only we were listening to Tangerine Fantasy with a bunch of people we didn't know, all lying on beds in the floor. Next to me, Bjorn shifts on the bed, his fuzzy arm brushing against mine. Everything about this situation reminds me of the time we spent together. It's almost like I'm back in middle school. A wave of nostalgia hits me. I get up and walk over to Miko, who's sitting on the floor and leaning against the wall, and sit down next to him. Carvin? He leans against me, resting his head on my shoulder. Miko? Just like the old times, isn't it? It's weird that we're old enough to say old times. It feels so weird to be in the university already. It's so surreal, and at the same time, so very unreal. Now I feel like I miss those times, but I wasn't really the happiest back then, you know? I've had some issues with myself I couldn't deal with until a lot later. It makes me wonder how we'll look back on this period in our lives ten years from now. Are you happy now, Carvin? Am I? Yes. I think I am. At least here, in this room. In this moment. I'm really glad to hear that, Carvin. You know, I feel like I wasn't really living, but only waiting for my life to start. I don't want to wait for anything any longer. I want to feel that I'm alive. I can feel him snuggle up closer to me, and I put my arm around him, holding him close. We stay like that, silent, listening, until the track ends, and then a bit longer. Nobody wants to break this magical moment. Ah, oh, damn it, I can't do anything with Miko right now. Shit. Okay, um, okay, I'm gonna save it right here. I was hoping for more Mika. Oh, Rune's room. I don't know Rune enough, so it'll turn me back. Okay. I consider visiting Rune, but I don't think I know him well enough to just barge into his room uninvited. Okay, so. I'm in my room. What's up? Blake responded to my text message almost almost instantly. I came here hoping to find someone, but since dinner is I, but since dinner it's oddly quiet in the whole guest house. I just lazed around for a while before deciding to text Lake. Got any ideas on what to do? I'm down in the common space. Come on over if you if you want. We'll think of something. <clears throat> okay, this is better than sitting here alone for sure. I get up from the sofa, walking in the direction of Lake's room. Cutie! Hey, you. Got here fast. Come in. Jorgen is inside, too. I've invited Miko already. <clears throat> oh, I didn't think that this would turn into a party. Hi, Jorgen. Carvin. When I enter the room, Jorgen is sitting on his bed, tapping at his phone furiously. He gives me a quick glance before going back to writing. The orange-tinted afternoon light reflects in his thick glasses, partially obscuring his somewhat feminine face. 
Standing here and looking at him, I feel like he is really somewhere far away and I might never reach him. Not until he would reach out to me and pull me in first. I definitely wouldn't call it a party. Besides, I thought about going out for a walk. It'd be nice to move a bit further. And, ah, sorry guys. I got distracted. Cat ran across the room really quickly. It'd be nice to move a bit after dinner. Playing table paw ball is nice, but that's just standing in one place filling your paws. I see you're energetic as always. We can go. Why not? Spending time outside here is only a pleasure. Comparing that to the crowded city... Oh, I definitely get what you mean. You know, sometimes I miss my old town. Sometimes I miss it too, but then I remember what living there looked like. I mean, there's just nothing to do for most of the year. You might be right. I enjoy living in a big city too. I love the energy it has. Just, you know, sometimes it's good to be back in nature. Why? Uh, why Miko, by the way? I thought you, I thought that you didn't get to know each other that well. Yeah, we bumped into each other in the corridor when we were coming back to our room and started talking. He said he has no plans, so I told him he can come over. Suddenly there's a knock on the door, and Miko's head peeks into the gap. Hi, can I come in? Ah, speak of the devil. I invited you, didn't I? Come in, sit down, hop on a bed, do whatever you like. Thanks. <laughs> he enters the room and looks at the three of us, visibly confused. Were you talking about me? No, oh, no, Carvin just mentioned you. Oh, okay. So, what is the plan? What would you say for a little walk? Why not? I'm down for whatever you're up to. <clears throat> Behind me, Jorgen puts down his phone and hops onto the wooden floor. Okay, I'm ready now. Oh, Carvin, I hope you do have some warmer clothes. Not really. Everything I've had with me is still in my room. Hmm... <laughs> the fuck? He looks up at the wardrobe and ponders for a while before reaching into it and taking out a warm-looking blue flannel, blue flannel shirt. Mm, excuse me. It's not much, but it's better than a sweater alone. Thanks, Lake. I put on the shirt. It is indeed very warm, and what's even nicer, it smells faintly of Lake. It feels like a nice warm hug from him. Let's go then, while the sun is still out. Jorgen, already in a pack, already in a jacket, walks up to the window and looks out. We don't have much time. Come on then, chop chop. We leave the room together. Lake leads the way, walking with a lively step, while Jorgen leaves as the last one and locks the door before catching up to us. Let me save it right here, guys. The sky is painted with a myriad of reds and yellows. It must be close to sunset already, but the sun is hidden behind the clouds. It's really chilly outside at this hour already, but the views make it worthwhile. Oh, I love winter. I love winter so much. It's definitely my favorite time of the year. <laughs> Sweater season. It's nice, but I wouldn't want it to be last all year for sure. I wouldn't mind, frankly. I'd rather have to put on a coat than overheat constantly. Plus, I love snow so much. Saying that, he f saying that, he flops backwards into the snow. Hmm. What are your favorite seasons, then? For me, it's autumn. What about you, Carvin? Oh, I love me some winter. Um... Uh, let's say autumn. I like autumn the most. It's the time of it's the time of sweaters and drinking hot cocoa, looking through the window at all the falling leaves. You, Miko? Miko thinks for a while before applying, staring into the open sky. I think my save my favorite season is always the current one. There's something really special about each one, and I always find myself enjoying the season I'm in the most. I love snow too, and I love the peacefulness winter brings. Everything seems still, and everything around is covered with white fluff. Before he can continue speaking, he gets hit with a snowball from behind. The look of surprise on his face is priceless. His tail completely straightens up behind him, too. Oh, you! He leans down to the ground and quickly makes a snowball of his own, immediately throwing it at Lake, who runs away from him. <laughs> Jorgen looks at the three of us with a startled look on his face before hiding behind me. I don't mean to stand still, though. It's been years since I've been in a snowball fight. I crouch on the ground and start making a snowball, but before I'm done, I get hit by one thrown by Lake. Damn, he has a good aim. 
The fresh snow is soft and just perfect for making snowballs. I finish mine quickly, patting it well to make it harder, and throw it at late. He ducks it, throwing himself into the snow again. Damn, what an agile beast. Miko has hidden himself behind the tree, but from where I can but from here I can see him clearly. I assemble another snowball in seconds, hoping that I won't get hit with another by Lake. Taking a few steps forward, I launch the snowball at unsuspecting Miko and hit him straight in the chest. He turns towards me surprised and I wave to him before a certain lion pounces on me, throwing me onto my back into the snow. Hello there. Before I can react, he kneels to me, grabs a paw full of snow and starts rubbing it into my snout. Lake! Oh my god, it's cold! You don't say. I grab a paw full of snow too and throw it at him. He starts laughing and gets off me, falling back, falling onto his back on the ground next to me. Phew! His chest rises and falls rhythmically as he pants, winded. The breaths escaping his muzzle turn into small clouds in the cold air before floating up and dissipating. Pause it right here. That was fun. Yes, yeah, certainly. Although, I can't feel my snout now. Mm-hmm. We lay on the snow in silence for a bit before Lake speaks again. You know, spending time with you is fun. I'm really happy we have the chance to do that here. Back in the dormitory, I often felt like you were avoiding me for some reason. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I had no idea you felt that way. I never avoided you, I just... I struggle with keeping up with my studies and progressing with photography, so I rarely had time to meet. Maybe I should rethink my priorities. Yeah, it'd be good for you if you just relaxed and did something fun from time to time. Like now, for example. Yeah, I liked that a lot. Hey, I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm going back to the guest house. It's quite cold already. See you two later. Hey, wait, we're coming too! I get up and grab Lake's paw, lifting him from the ground. Where's Jorgen? Over there, waiting for us at the door. Shaking the snow away from our fur, we return to the guest house together. Sweet, sweet, cute moment. Locker room. Locker room! Sexy dudes! After the walk, the four of us split, and each of went our own ways. Lake took the flannel shirt back and went with Jorgen back to their room, and Miko went to his own room as well. I spent some time in the lobby, watching TV, but it quickly got boring, so I'm walking around the guest house looking for anyone. Looks like there's no one here. I decided to check out the locker room to see if anyone was in the swimming pool or the sauna, but it doesn't look like it. Where is everyone? Uh, go to the common space. For a moment, I think about going to the sauna alone just to relax, but frankly, I'm already plenty relaxed. Just bored. There's a faint melody coming from somewhere. I stop for a moment and listen. It sounds like a piano, only muffled. Oh yeah, now I remember there was a piano in the common space. I continue walking towards that room. The closer I am to it, the louder the music gets. Walking into the common space, I see it's Miko sitting behind the piano. He notices me entering the room and stops playing, turning towards me. Carvin! Did you know they have a piano here? Yeah, I've been here a few times already. I didn't pay much attention to it, not knowing how to play piano myself. It's even in tune! I was afraid that it was only here for decoration, but someone is taking care of it. He touches the keyboard with such affection that for a moment I can't help but feel envious of it. Mm-hmm. That's good. I remember you always liked playing piano. That's right. I haven't seen one in a long time. Remember the one we had remember the one we had at our school? Oh yeah. This one looks better for sure. There wasn't anything wrong with that one. It was just old. Still, it was so much fun. I sit down on the sofa, feeling somewhat awkward standing in the middle of the room. Oh, pardon me, guys. Oh, I think I overslept last night. I was always pretty bad at playing piano, so I don't really share the sentiment. Oh, but I remember staying with you after classes and listening to you play. It brings back some memories, doesn't it? It does indeed. Why'd you stop playing? Rune and Bjorn suddenly emerge from the corridor, walking alongside each other. Bjorn holds some book in his paw, but from here I can't read the title. Miko. And Carvin. Hello! Hi, Rune. Hey, Bjorn. I had no idea you could play piano too, Miko. Knowing your way around the keyboard helps a lot with composing. I actually started with the piano and switched to, and switched to electronic instruments later. 
We heard someone playing the piano in here and came to listen. I hope you don't mind an audience. I don't, although don't expect too much from me. I haven't played a real acoustic thing in a long time. Rune walks into the room and sits down on an armchair. Bjorn, however, walks up to me and points at the spot next to me on the sofa. You don't mind if I sit here? No, no, don't worry. He sits down heavily next to me and leans forward with elbows on his knees, resting his chin on his paws. I can hear the wooden construction of the sofa creak under our combined weight. Um, so, would you like me to play something? Sure. Hmm, maybe this one. Miko turns towards the piano and lifts both his canine paws, wiggling his fingers for a moment before putting them down on the keyboard. Everyone goes silent in an instant, leaving only the crackling from the fireplace resounding in the room. Wow, that ended quickly. Okay. All right, guys, that has been the end of this episode of Dawn Course. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!